Welcome to Catch Happy Studio Anglers. Today we're talking Napa River fishing strategies, equipment, all of the details. Now I own Sweeney Sports. This is where we're broadcasting from. This is the studio built back here. Um, it's a shop in Napa. So over the last three years, I fished Napa River a lot, maybe weekly, maybe more often, both from the boat and bank. We did a lot of trawling, we did a lot of casting, we did a lot of bait fishing. So I'm going to talk you through what I've learned over time, specifically both my own personal experience as well as talking to customers and other guides um, and, and sort of our goal is to get you on fish. Okay, so let's talk Napa River. First of all, it's an amazing fishery. It's really cool. I, it's one of my favorite things to go out, go out in the river on the boat or early morning with the fog rising over the um, over the terrain. It's just it's absolutely gorgeous. If you follow my YouTube channel, which is Catch Happy on YouTube, uh, go watch some of those videos if you haven't. It's just worth the scenery on its own. But you want to get on the water. You want to catch fish. So let's first talk about what the Napa River is. It's a tidal water system with waters coming in from the ocean to the bay, from the bay into the river system, and out into the sloughs and in, into the marshes. So there's a lot of pools. It's sort of a wetland system uh, that drains and refills about twice a day. You can find tides, Napa River tides, uh, on, online anywhere, and you can follow those. Now, some people say, oh, I only fish outgoing tides, never fish incoming. Uh, other, some people are the other way around. I find success in both. And again, if you want to go to YouTube, check out Catch Happy, look at some striper fishing videos. We catch them on any tide. Now, this time of the season is the best. Um, October, November, December, they're coming into the system to feed before it gets really cold. Uh, the waters right now is just the right temperature for them to still be aggressive um, to get ready for the colder temps, right? And so this is where we're going to go out there and catch them and target them. Um, as far as tide strategy, now on the incoming tide, what I found is a lot of fish a stage, and when I say what I found, means I've gone around the river back and forth, covered every square, square inch of it probably, uh, using my nice garment sonar, have a Lawrence as well, and I can see down what's happening. And what I'm seeing is uh, a lot of them are staged up near the mouths of the sloughs. Now, it's they're kind of spread out across that bank before it goes into the cut into the slough. So they're more or less in the main channel, or a lot of them are. I'm having most luck trolling against the tide, believe it or not, on the incoming, and with the tide on the outgoing. Now, when the outgoing tide starts, so incoming tide, you know, it's coming from the bay and it's filling up the system. So they're kind of staged up and ready in the main channel to see what, what comes their way. Um, on the outgoing tide, they are deeper into the sloughs, into those cuts into the larger pools. When the pools are draining into the slough, they're sort of uh, strategically positioned by those cuts, waiting for the bait to just you know, float in right in their mouth. They're aggressive, and they're aggressive across the board. So having said that, both the tides are good. Now, when you bank fishing, you really don't have much choice as far as going with or against the tide. You have a spot, and you fish that spot, and that's fine too. They're traveling through the system a lot. The, another thing I found is that when you find 6, 7, 10, 20 fish kind of stacked up in, in, in a particular area, you can troll or, or throw to them a few times um, and, sh and find success, but they will move. That fish is not staying in one place at all times. That's why Napa is such an amazing fishery because every day is a new day. You can kind of know where they might be, but you have to go cover a lot of water. So one strategy I recommend for you boaters is go find them first before you put lines in. Because trolling is very slow. You'll, you'll waste a lot of time if you're not seeing them. Um, all right, so let's talk about trolling techniques. Um, let me start with back sets. When I say back set, that means when you're on the boat, putting your rod in and letting the lure out, um, some people say, oh, stripers are not you know, boat shy, they'll bite 30 feet out, and they might. What I like to do is back set at least 75 feet or maybe more. So it depends on the depth. 
Now, the further back you get your lure away from the boat, the deeper typically it would go. So in 10 to 12 feet kind of depth, when we're talking about in slew fishing, I backsat at 75 to 95, sometimes even a little bit longer, just so it, what I like to do is for my trolling rod to do this. It almost looks like a bite. And so what's going on there is your lure, and we'll talk about lures in just a moment, is hitting the bottom. And that is, stripers can't resist that. They'll just come up and attack it. Uh, if it's not touching the bottom, you're still catching. I mean, you're still fishing, but it's not going to be as effective. That's what I found over the years. So back set it far, so it has enough length to dive and hit the bottom. That's kind of how you know you're in the right, you know, right spot. Now, if it gets deeper, you back set it some more. I usually you go sometimes go up to 120, 130 feet as well in the back. So that's strategy number one. Um, as far as equipment i'd say so your trolling rod typical trolling rod like for example this phoenix right here this is a extreme trolling special uh it's 189 you can get trolling rods for as low as 70 bucks and up to you know 500 dollars. this is somewhere in the middle um i like this rod a lot because um as every trolling rod it has a very flexible tip so what you want to do is you want to have your lure do the work. You want to see do the work with the flexibility of the tip. Because if the rod is stiff, it's just kind of like a stick, right? So it, it, it's flexible enough. You can see what the lure is doing. But more importantly, when the fish bites, it won't rip the uh, lure out of their mouth. It will have enough flex to flex with the fish and keep it hooked. Um, one thing people look for in uh, trolling rods is a pretty stiff backbone. So you want a flexible tip and stiff backbone. That's how you kind of judge the rod. Uh, because technically, a lot of times you want to have a little bit of power when you bring the fish in. Because especially if your other rod is still fishing, your boat is at, uh, you know, going with speed and you're going against that speed to try to uh, lure the fish in. But it, it works really well. I'll talk to you about lures, I'm sorry, I'll talk about reels that match these rods in just a minute. But uh, um, another option um, I lately have been using, and again, I fish a lot with friends, and a lot of people uh, really appreciate this um, when they get on my boat. I use kokanee rod to fish for striper, okay? And I'm having the best time of my life. Now, this particular one is from Vance Tackle. Vance is a friend. Uh, this is $114. You can't really get those rods anywhere. They're hard to get. Um, but th this is, we have a few of them here in the shop. If you're interested, come talk to me about it. You see how the eyes are spiraling out? So this is a spiral eye. I don't know if you can see this on camera. It's for a reason because when it's under load, you see that last eye? It actually is pointing up. So it's, it has a better spread of energy across the rod and the beautiful fight you will enjoy, watch my last video on YouTube. Man, uh, fighting this, uh, fighting a striper on this rod is incredible. Okay, so if you wanna be a cowboy and have a lot of fun, try a kokanee troller for your striper trolling game. I think you will find it very, very interesting. Now let's talk about reels. I personally use this Abu Garcia. This is a $120 reel. It's not extremely expensive for what you get and what you get is a digital counter. It has backlight as well. And it's just an easy to manage reel. You don't need anything huge. This is on the smaller side. It has the clicker right here. You can click on and off. So when you reel in, you wanna click this off. When you are setting it up in your boat, so you can hear you start turning it on. So that's a clicker, you know, clicker off. You have smooth roll. This is the drag. It's really nice. We sold out of those very, very quickly. Um, after I covered them in some of my videos, but I ordered about 10 more, so we should have more for you if you're interested in picking up a nice trolling reel that is budget, inexpensive, and really, really good. Another one is for $200. Again, you can go as high as you want. I'm here to just tell you that things, you know, fishing is affordable, or it could be as fun and as enjoyable as you want it to be, just like golfing. Um, you can spend a lot of money, or you can spend a little money and enjoy it the same way. Now, um, 
This reel right here is, is uh, Akuma cold water. Um, it has a manual counter, as you can see. A lot of guys like this because it's just simpler. It doesn't have a lot of uh, buttons to press, so to speak, only one reset button. So that's good. But you want the counter, and the reason why you want the counter is so you know your back set. Let's say you back set in your lure 85 feet, you're passing a spot. Now, you got fish on, you got that fish, you boated that fish, you marked it on your radar, hopefully, right, on your sonar. And then you turn around, you line up, you want to do another pass. Your back set is important because if you're setting different depth and different action for the lure, back, back set is speed. You got to take note of your speed, note of your spot where you caught the fish, and note of your back set number. How many feet behind the boat is your lure? Okay. Once you have those three numbers, you can turn around and troll right back to where you, you got that fish, and likely you will have another hookup. So that's, a, again, be the strategy mixed in with the equipment. But let's talk about lures for trolling. Again, we're still at trolling right now. Cover the rods, cover the reels. So I want to make sure I'm covering the bases here. Number one by a huge margin, okay? This has lately been all summer long. I've been working it without success. Boy, this has been crazy. So this is called the wild thing. We make it custom, make it here at Sweeney's as a little skirt, and it has some feathers or warm on the back. It depends what we make. This particular one we call the Italian Stallion. It, this, this color combination has been working magic for me. And uh, we just got seven fish on it last trip, which was uh, quite good for three-hour fishing. Uh, gotta Remember, got to go find them first before you troll. So this one is a deep diver. It goes in the bottom. You back set it, I don't know, 75 to 100 feet. Depends on the depth. And again, you want to make sure your rod is bumping when this is bumping the ground. Um, and you'll catch fish. Number two, all-time favorite, is this lure called Golden Boy. I call it that. And it should be called Golden Boy. It's a Kuro Shot 75. It's gold color. It's Spro. You know, 10 bucks. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, this is $14.99. You can buy it online at SweetieSports.com. Or you come to the shop and get one. Uh, incredible. So this is a crew shot you can buy anywhere, but hopefully you come by from us. Uh, this one is golden col color, and it's been nothing but crazy action for me, both mornings and the afternoons, which is surprising. Now, the, the good thing about rattle traps is, or rattle-based lures, right? It's got little bowls inside that rattle and make it erratic sound, which stripers love. Now, expert trick right here. You want to put scent sardine, anchovy, trout scent, whatever scent you have, you want to kind of cover your lure with some scent. Put it on the tails as well. Um, get rid of the human smell and also add a little bit of more enticement to your lure. Okay. The other three I'm going to show you, these work off and on. You got to try those. When I say off and on, that means sometimes only this works. Only this and nothing else. Not even those two, right? So, you need to have, I would say, about four or five different color variations in your tackle box. Over time, I know they're 750 They're not cheap, but they're not that expensive. And uh, what you should do over time, you should accumulate a few of them. And uh, it's worth your time to change these about every 15 minutes of trolling. If you're not getting bites and you're seeing fish on the radar, on the sonar, that means you're not giving them what they want. Okay, so I will keep shifting them and again, apply the fish scent on them as you go. So that as far as your uh, trolling strategies. So casting from a boat is going to be kind of the same as bank casting. And the things I like for casting and the same things I use successfully is these um, swim baits uh, from Storm. There's a wild eye shad. Um, Learning things all the time, right? Learning from Luke, you want to use natural colors as much as possible because, you know, you don't really see white fish out there, although white swim baits sometimes work magically. Um, lately, I've been throwing things that are more, uh, that look like more a natural prey, and we've been getting success. Again, cover it, smother it with some fish scent as well, and cast those out there. Now, as far as casting rods, you guys probably already know if you fish at all. Um, 
what to get. I'm just going to give you an example. This Phoenix one is $190 rod. You know, it's a really nice one. Uh, it's super fast action. So what you're looking for in a casting rod is fast action. You want to have stiffness, but flexibility here. But you want it to be stiff because when you are throwing that swim bait and you're reeling the swim bait, right? You're reeling it. Then you get a bite. You want to set the hook. You want to set the hook so it like pokes through their lips, right? Through their mouth. Now, if you have a really, really soft rod, that's not going to happen. You're not going to set hook, especially not on the striper. They're, you know, they're pretty sturdy fish. So you need something light enough, but st uh, stiff enough. So fast action rods is what you're looking for. I like them longer so I can cast further. You have optionality when you cast. You can cast closer or further, okay? So this Phoenix is a perfect example. Um, and I use them because they have lifetime warranty, okay? Even though the shop owner is still expensive, you know, to break rods. So lifetime warranty helps. Phoenix has been one of the best brands we ever worked with as far as standing behind their product. As far as casting reels, I don't really cast with bait casters. Now, some of you out there are very comfortable with that, and that's fine. I respect that. I can cast a bait caster. I just don't enjoy it because I like to have my eyes on the water at all times to see what's going on. I find myself kind of playing around with this bait caster, trying to manage my finger holding, try not to get the you know line all over the place. Anyway, spinning reels is what I use. You can use whatever you like. This is a 4,000 size. I recommend 4,000 to 4,500, maybe th actually 3,000 to 4,500. Just depends. And when I say 3,000, it's a smaller reel. It fits less line, but it's lighter. Again, it's just a little bit more fun to fight fish on the lighter gear, which is what I do. I like lighter gear. This is kind of my jam. So you pair this up, and this, this reel is not expensive. Again, relatively speaking, okay? This is a $95 reel. You put that onto your Phoenix. Um, and again, you can go as far as 300 get some uh, really nice salt specific reels. Let me speak about salt. So Napa River is brackish, so it's not super salty, but there's enough salt there to corrode your stuff. So I would rinse it off. Um, I rinse my equipment after fishing and it's just a matter of principle and what I do. Recommend you do the same. And so this is your setup. Looks really nice, feels really nice. Perfect pairing. So, okay. Now we've covered casting and trolling in the boat. Let's talk about bank fishing. The, one of my favorite things to do is to fish with bait. You could see this beautiful grass strip right here. Live bait is magical because the fish um, are eating what they're naturally eating, which is, you know, in this case, grass shrimp. You can have pile worm. You can even have a minnow out in the river a live minnow, all those things we carry here in our shop. We have a full live bait section, um, mud suckers, bullheads, all those things you can put, I mean, ghost shrimp, which is coming. We're gonna have live ghosts pretty soon here, probably this week, but you put those in a hook. Don't forget to use magic thread, okay? This thing is just a twine that helps you keep your bait on the hook. So you put the bait on the hook, you twine it, and then you cast it out there. So I'll show you a setup in a moment. Actually, let's go through that right now. So for example, this is one of my bait fishing reels. I do this, again, I'm going to go tomorrow. I'm going to do this a lot. Uh, this is a 4,000 size reel. I have a 20-pound line on this thing. And uh, the way you make it work is... You have a sliding sinker with a bead going to a swivel, and that goes to your leader. You can buy striper leaders here in the shop. You can buy them anywhere, or you can make your own. doesn't matter. Um, let me talk about the weights a little bit. I didn't bring one to show you, but you want to use about four to five ounce pyramid weight on the river. Reason being is that uh, there's a lot of tidal action. So your, if your bait is not stationary on the bottom, it's floating somewhere, and you're losing bait and you're not getting bites. That's why you're not getting bites because your weight is too light. So make sure you have adequate size bait. 
Now this particular um, this particular rod is a medium light, medium heavy, medium action is fine. Uh, with bait fishing, you want to put this in a holder, right? You want to have flexibility in the tip. You don't want it to be fast action because um, the fish can just break your rod or, <laughs> or take it away or not get hooked. You want this tip, almost like trolling, right? You want this tip to have some flexibility to help the fish will pick up your bait and start riding with it and zzz, gets hooked. So you want that tip to help you get a hookup where the backbone, similar with trolling, you want that to be at some strength so you can actually work that fish out, out of the reeds and all kinds of things like that, okay? So that's your basic bait fishing technique. Um, you have questions, you can always go to catchhappy.co and put your question in or come to Sweeney Sports here in Napa. Now, um, not, it's not done yet. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, real quick about equipment for or lures for uh, bank fishing. Okay, if you throw in lures, um, oh, let's call this the same setup as we would throw lures on the boat, right? That's the same, doing the same thing. Same things apply, okay? You want to use same swim baits. You want to use the same rattle traps. But one thing I'd recommend to try from bank fishing is this is called bucktail jig, okay? You toss that out there and you walk the bottom. And by the way, same thing applies to those swim baits. What you want to do is toss it out there, let it sink, and then raise it up, swim it up, and let it go down again. Raise it up, swim it up, let it go down again. That's the action you want to keep hitting the bottom with your swim bait or with your bucktail jig because that's where they're looking. And you want to act naturally. You don't want to go fast. Sometimes you want to go fast. You just got to vary things. But a lot of times you want to swim up and let it go down. And you'll get hit right on when it's going down. Don't worry, you'll, you'll know. The hit feels like this. It feels like hitting your rod. You will know and you'll set the hook. But... Um, that's typically the technique. Now, to learn more, watch my videos. It's, it's Catch Happy on YouTube. Come here to the shop at Sweeney Sports. We are uh, always looking to help you with questions. And we can definitely outfit you for a successful trip on the water. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Go to catchhappy.co and get hooked on fishing. See you next time.